we're going to be tying uh, old standby tarpon fly. Uh, this is called the tarpon toad, uh, also known as the green cookie in some circles. I've got an SC17 one aught hook. I've got some three aught chartreuse uni thread. I'm going to start my thread right directly behind the eye and work it back to the just to past the barb where the hook starts to dip down just a bit. I've got uh, some chartreuse blood quills. Selected a feather here. We're just going to use a single feather. I'm going to kind of prepare it by slicking it back just a bit. I want this tail to be approximately two and a half inches long, something like that. Total length of the fly is going to be about three inches then. So once I've got slicked back all my follicles under control, I'll just snip the stem and tie that onto the hook shank. So in order to make these flies fish properly, you have to make it so that the fly doesn't foul on the cast. So this is one of the critical steps. We're going to take the feather, we're going to lift it up, and we're going to basically do what amounts to a parachute post type of wrap around the feather. Uh, even just this little tiny bit of a post like that makes it so that that feather's not, when it's wet, it's not going to flip over the hook shank. Tarpon will not eat a foul, fouled fly. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to I've cut off about an inch and a half long piece of cross-cut yellow rabbit. I'm going to tie that in uh, so that the hide side is facing towards the hook shank and we're going to wrap this basically just like a hackle. Don't need much of it, it's an accent color. Um, so we're just going to make a single wrap, get that leather to lay down nice and flat. This is cross-cut rabbit, right? This is cross-cut rabbit, correct. Okay. So we're just going to make a little fur collar. I've made it pretty much exactly a full circle around there. Slick some of those hair fibers out of the way. Snip off the excess. So now I've got just a little bit of a collar. I'll cover up that little piece of hide that's on there. We've got a nice looking collar and also tail. Now I'm going to take a piece of uh, uh, fluorescent green McFly lawn. Um, this is another critical little step in this fly. The reason why we use uh, a McFly one is that it's a polypropylene material, it floats. This enables us to cast way ahead of fish, let the fly gradually settle down and into face level. So what I typically do is I cut off two pieces um, off of one side of the skein, and then I'm going to go through and I'm going to make five individual pieces what I like to do is have each one just a little bit longer than the last. And the reason why we do that is so that when we're tying it in, we can make space for the other one. So usually I start with the shortest. I'm going to figure eight wrap on here. I just want to make sure that they're on there tight is the critical thing. I usually try to use as few wraps as possible just so that we're avoiding the, the bulk buildup. It's easy to do when you start tying these Merkin style heads. So you'd use the same technique for a permit crab? Ex exactly the same thing, yeah. Well, you know, we'd modify the tail and everything else. Right, yeah, but, yeah. The, but the body, this, this... The wrapping is the same. We'd alternate bands of brown and tan. And, and as about as many or more... It's it basically on, on a hook, on this one aught hook shank, I, I got space for about five gathers. Okay. So again, we're going to just kind of get our thread under control, make three wraps, four wraps, something like that. And again, we're trying to not build up very much bulk, but we can always reinforce these wraps uh, at the end of the fly, which we're going to do um, with a little bit of zap gap. I've also tied variations of this with bunny and stuff like that. If you're fishing someplace outside of the Keys, um, you know, you can really still get away with fishing some flies that are a bit, a bit more on the bulky side. Uh, but if you start, you know, getting down into South Florida, you're going you're gonna to realize how spooky those fish are and how many people have actually casted them during the, the course of their migration. I prefer this fly on Oceanside Flats um, in real shallow, clear water. Uh, and again, you know, part of the reason why this fly works as well as it does is because we can cast it way the heck out in front of them, sometimes, you know, 50, 60 feet in front of the, the line of the fish, uh, and then let them swim into it as opposed to casting uh, directly at the fish, having a big bulky fly land, spook them. Um, 
So this, like I said, this is a go-to, uh, and I've got some other stuff that I tie and use when uh, this fly fails to produce. But as a general starting point, this is the usually one of the first ones we have tied on in the morning. In the green over the tan? In the green over the tan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Highly visible, I think more more important than any just about anything else. Um, a lot of debate has been, you know, over the years as to what this fly actually looks like. Um, it's very bait fish like. Um, one day, however, when I was uh, in the Keys, I saw a big um, hatch of these uh, reef squid, and the coloration was almost identical. They mm. had they were kind of a clear bulbed squid with uh, fluorescent yellow and green highlights. So I always have had to wonder. I have seen at night tarpon feed on squid in deep flats. Um, so I've just figurated a set of large mono eyes on there. And that's pretty much it for the fly as far as the tying points go. Uh, I'm going to whip finish here. I've got this kind of extra big raggy head. And again, this is another one of those things that's kind of tough to figure out at first. Um, it took me a little while. Uh, what I do to trim the head back is I've got a pair of curved serrated scissors. Critical. If you try to do it with just a pair of smooth scissors, generally speaking what happens is this material is so slick it just kind of slides off of them and you don't get a good clean cut. This way I can kind of sculpt the head and with that serrated edge I can get a really good bite. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pull this tight. I'm going to angle my scissors off kind of into triangular wedge shape of the head and then just snip off the excess. So again, I'm going to turn the scissors the same angle that I did on that side. I'm going to turn them off to the side like this, stretch that material kind of out into the side, and snip that off as well. So then I can just come in here, trim off those little tiny bit of a, a tag in there. So the head's more or less finished. Now I'm going to take a zap gap You can either use the tube variety or the brush variety. I'm going to put a good sized dollop of that stuff on the eye and then I'm going to lay a decent sized chunk right down along those thread wraps. And once that stuff hardens up, that head's not going any place. You know, one of the things about tarpon is that they've got a really rough mouth and as a result, your fly is probably going to be toast if you stick it in one's head anyhow. Um, so, you know, this is a relatively easy tie once you figure out that figure eighting. Um, and again, just the ability to cast way out ahead of the fish is it's really critical. Um, it's been a favorite of mine for over 10 years now. Uh, I hope it's one of yours too.